Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the emotional truth? No, I'm just your monkey. Hi, I'm Scott Ott with Stephen Green and Bill Whittle, and this episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, I kind of collapsed a couple of ideas into that lead-in sentence to tell you okay. about our friend Hassan Minaj. Hassan Minaj, the comedian that you probably know from uh, from the Comedy Channel Daily Show, um, apparently has just revealed to the New Yorker uh, that despite what he says during his shows and comedy tours, when he's talking seriously, not not telling jokes, uh, he, in fact, did not get stood up at uh, the door of a white girl who was supposed to go to the homecoming dance with him. Um, he also, uh, his daughter did not open an envelope that suddenly sprinkled white powder on her. Uh, he was not threatened at the Saudi embassy, nor did he watch Jared Kushner uh, sit in a chair reserved for an imprisoned Saudi activist. All of these things he tells as if they were fact in his his shows, uh, none of these things actually happened. Um, and this is the, uh, the reasoning that Hassan Minaj uses. He says, every story in my life is built around a seed of truth. My comedy Arnold Palmer, you know, like the drink, my comedy Arnold Palmer is 70% emotional truth and then 30% hyperbole, exaggeration, and fiction. Stephen Green, it's clear when he tells these stories that he is doing it to portray the difficulties of being a person of color or being a Muslim um, in this country and that uh, he has to be afraid and he lives this life that's different than the, you know, you and I would understand. And yet now he's saying that basically the stories are emotionally true, but not literally true. Uh, by the way, the girl uh, was contacted later said that actually she and Hassan were close friends and that she had turned him down to go to that dance days before the dance ever happened. He didn't show up on her porch. And, uh, and she, as a result of that, Steve, has, because he has not been very careful in concealing her identity and in fact posted a picture of her and someone else online, she has faced online threats and doxing for years because he was careless about her identity and branded her basically as a racist. Uh, Stephen Green, is it okay for entertainers to say, hey, I'm just up here on stage telling my stories, telling my jokes, this is a show, and even though I seem to be sincere about it, I'm not accountable for the literal truth of what I say. Oh, but here's, here's the rub, isn't it? Um, he poses as an entertainer, but it strikes me what he really is is a, a sort of preacher uh, with a with a particular moral story that uh, that that he needs to tell to enlighten the world that he uh, uh, livens up with uh, a little comedy some some jokes like 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 any good Christian preacher might uh, do at the pulpit. But no, he's he's not an entertainer. That's that's not his job. He's 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 posing as one. But what he really is is a, an hysteric emotional cripple. It, as, as you're telling me these things that he's done, that is these are his emotional truths. Well, get a grip on yourself, man. These things didn't happen. Stop being a sissy. Man up. It, it, it reminds me of one of my funny. Okay, how do you pick a funniest scene in uh, in the movie Airplane? It 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 can't be done. But the one that popped into my head, Scott, while you're giving me the setup, is the the woman who's going into hysterics, and and I can't remember who slaps her first to 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 try and get her out of the hysterics. But as the scene progresses over over twenty thirty seconds, whatever it is, you've got a huge lineup of women, of of passengers and and crew just just ready to, to to slap and and shake this woman out of her hysterics. And you've got one guy with a billy club, you know, tapping his hand with a billy club, just just yes. getting ready. And it it just gets more and more absurd as the camera pans down this line of people in the aisle of the airplane. That's this guy. That's this guy. He is. An absolute hysteric and an emotional cripple who's found a way to take his, oh, I don't know, psychological perversions and use them to harm other people's reputations to enhance his own. Turn this guy off. He's not funny. He's not entertaining. And he lies. There. 
Bill Whittle, in the intro, I made a reference to it, said, I'm just your monkey. Um, I was actually uh, reversing a quote from John Stewart, who once appeared on an interview with Tucker Carlson, and uh, Carlson was upset that Stewart was being intensely political and argumentative and said, hey, I thought you were supposed to be funny, tell a joke. And Stewart said, I'm not your monkey. And, uh, and in this case, Hassan Minaj seems to be wanting to play it the other way by basically saying, hey, I'm just an entertainer. I'm just an entertainer. I'm your monkey. You know, like, how can you, how can you fault him for doing that? But clearly, he's doing more than just telling jokes. And if you watch these segments, these are clearly not jokes. In fact, the story about the, uh, the white powder in the envelope that uh, his daughter opened and it spilled out on her, um, that actually was an envelope he opened, and he said there was some kind of white powder inside of it, and he immediately turned to his wife and made a joke and said something like, hey, look, we got anthrax in the mail. He clearly knew it wasn't a harmful substance and in the moment made a joke about it, took that and imposed emotional truth on it to say, basically, the, the daughter of a brown American has to be terrified because somebody might mail her anthrax. Uh, sh what should happen? Because in the past, you know, we've, we've bemoaned the fact that entertainers are getting essentially canceled uh, because they say politically incorrect things. Should, should Hassan Minaj be canceled or what should be his fate uh, for his public um, deceptions? Well, I think cancel culture is just plain evil. I don't, I mean, there's a difference between ignoring somebody into oblivion and actively trying to get them taken down. Yeah. And I don't believe anybody should be actively taken down. So I just think ignoring them into oblivion is, is probably the way to go. A couple of things here. First of all, it sounds like he and Jesse Smollett must have an awful lot of fun <laughs> things to talk about over dinner. Um, the second thing that's important here is that he says this is his emotional truth, but this is where I, this is where I think the point is. He says that he's basically saying, I've invented these situations because this is how it feels to be a, a person of color in America. Yeah. But when he lists the things that make it awful to be a person of color in America, he can't list any things that actually happen to make it awful. He has to invent things to, to justify a worldview of victimhood. And, and this is where it crosses the line from, from, from not being really comedy. Let, let just, let's just take a couple examples from from uh, somebody I know the three of us love very, very much, who's an actual comedian. So Brian Regan has a routine where he goes to the hospital and he asks for pain medication. He says, my pain's a seven or something. And he says, a guy who comes in, he said, the most painful thing that ever happened is your femur is fractured. And and I said I was at eight or a nine or something. And this guy comes in here with a broken femur. Who said that they were eight or nine? Now, <laughs> that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Right. And I and I know that actually didn't happen. He also does a routine where he's in a sound booth because he's losing his hearing. And they said, okay, what does this sound like? And he says, well, I, I, I can't understand. Well, say what it sounds most like. And he says, chicken musket. And everybody laughs. Now, I bet he was in a – I'm going to be willing to bet that he was in an audio booth, heard yeah. a word, and, and chicken musket was in fact what this comedian's first reaction was. And so that actually kind of was true. And, and remains funny. But what this guy is doing is not doing that. He's libeling people. And, yeah. and in the case of this, well, first of all, if it turns out you got turned down for a date for the prom, then I'm, then I'm as, I, I, I deserve all of the person of color privileges that <laughs> anyone, anybody else could get in this horrible racist country. But, but ultimately, he's slandering people. When, when the reason Jesse Smollett crossed a line is not because Jesse Smollett decided to, you know, tell a story. It's that he went to the police with a tale of being assaulted by two guys wearing MAGA hats. And he is, and he is, when he does that, he is, he is, he is slandering me. Then he's slandering everybody else. And what this guy is doing is he's slandering white people. He has no historically factual stories to tell to justify his oppression so he slanders people by inventing things and tells them as if they were true and and that's where the problem is i don't think the guy needs to be canceled i just think he needs to be called out as a liar and, and a guy who's who's neurotic and insane and not very funny but you you again you have to come back to this we first saw this with the with the tea party where they were saying tea party people are all racist well how do you know well because here's a sign it's a racist sign it's like well, that sign was 
that wasn't from the Tea Party. You made that sign. Yeah, well, we made the yeah. sign because we know you're racist. So we took a racist sign to a Tea Party thing to show this emotional truth that is predicated on our desire to be seen as victims. And I'll just close this by saying I'd never heard of the guy. And now I know why. Uh, by the way, the story about Jared Kushner sitting in a chair that was reserved uh, for an imprisoned Saudi activist, uh, that was that event uh, was a Time Magazine gala in, back in 2019. And uh, not only did Jared Kushner sit in a, not sit in a chair reserved for a Saudi activist, uh, but there was no such chair. It didn't even exist. <laughs> So anyway, anyway, uh, this is what this is what uh, Hassan Minaj says in his own defense. I don't think I'm manipulating the audience. I think they're coming for an emotional roller coaster, and the implication is he's giving the people what they want. Uh, but the problem, as Bill and Steve have both kind of pointed out, is that uh, it cheapens the it, it hurts people who have actually been victims of some sort. You know, it's not that there's it's not that we have a perfect country and there's never been any kind of racial discrimination, but when you go out and make up stories like this, then you then you actually ruin it for the people who have actually had bad things happen to them and and you're it's like you're trying to look virtuous because you're being persecuted when you're not. Meanwhile, some people have been and uh, and they're being ignored. So anyway, that that's part of it. Um I don't think this guy should be canceled. I don't. I wasn't going to his events, so I'm not going to boycott them. I wasn't watching his show, so I'm not going to boycott that. Um, so, so I just think that when we get to the point where it is legitimate to make an argument in a public forum that says, look, I know that I'm not telling the truth about this, but see, it could be true. It, it's emotionally true. And I heard some, a panel discussing this on TV, and one of them said something like, people have had this experience where they feel like there is racism against them. The host of this panel who was talking about this said, now I personally, he was a black man, he goes, I personally have never had anybody do anything like that to me, but I know that there are people. And so... <laughs> So it just seems like it's this chain of people saying, well, this didn't happen to me, but it certainly happened to somebody, but it didn't happen to him, but it certainly happened to somebody. And after a while, you're just like, okay, where's, where's the actual person? Let that person tell his story. Let the person who had the discrimination happen tell the story. But don't be, you don't, you can be a funny comedian without having to have people feel sorry for you for something that never happened. So if you're a funny guy, Tell funny stories and let it go at that. There's no such thing as emotional truth that isn't also anchored in actual truth. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.